What is usually a pretty predictable situation with Polish developers comes with a twist. What was once imagined as a single player mode for an official release for Gwent, an online card game was saved for later and made into a standalone game. One would now expect to see a card game with a story mode tacked onto it, but what we got was quite a contrary. Your Majesty! Bandits! There! At the tree line! The Count's footmen, unaccustomed to escorting their queen, sought to shield her with their bodies and assumed a tight formation to do so. They were promptly knocked aside as Meade charged headlong at the bandits, brandishing her blade and bellowing a ferocious cry. Attack! Charge! The story is heavily focused in every aspect of the game, and even the card part of the game will get you off guard regardless of your Gwent experience. There are two kinds of battles, a puzzle match and a standard battle. There are tons of puzzles in the game, most of them are unique and require much trial and error to get through. We must trust each other! They are quite creative, in some you are defending against down rolling boulders, an infestation of crazy cows, zombies or various monsters in a world that has taken a wrong turn with warfare and magic. Each puzzle has unique set of rules. So whenever you think you figured it all out by solving one, another one will get you off guard. Sometimes you need to manipulate cards and abilities to place them in the right order. Sometimes you have to find a way to reduce enemies to a certain number to wipe them all out in a single move. And sometimes there will be a great beast in the way, so big that each card will represent a part of it and can be only eliminated by strategically aiming at certain parties. Punished. We must thank the gods for this victory both great and just. There will also be a chase type of puzzle, escape type of puzzle or even a logical one that will remind you of some classics like Hexic or Bejeweled. And then there is one of memory where you match pairs. When it comes to standard battle, do not fool yourself. In comparison to Gwent, none of them is actually standard. In fact, there is not a single standard Gwent match in the game. The only difference to puzzles is that you're playing with a set of cards by your choice from your in-game collection. Each of them is a different challenge, and on harder difficulties you have to change your deck to match the given challenge. They vary on occasion. Sometimes you're breaking through the enemy defenses, sometimes you're capturing the runaways, sometimes you're fending off hordes of monsters or attacking enemies, and sometimes you're ambushed and fight through the enemy traps. And then some more. Variety is great, but if you are also a Gwent fan like me, you'll find the complete lack of classic battles quite disappointing actually. As a spin-off title, Thronebreaker works great, and is prime example on how to do such a game. Nevertheless, I cannot shake the feeling that the balance left more to be desired. Same goes for resources, as the game feels difficult to manage in the beginning only to have piles of leftover wood and gold at the end of it. 
Regardless, it's still enjoyable and immerses you in the game as every detail and aspect of it is wrapped in story and the world you're in. As you're traveling on a map in an old school RPG style, there are details and challenges everywhere. Even where you're not fighting, you come across situations that force you to make a choice. Quiet, wench! You'll scare the fish off! If you want to make a bridge to get across, you have to send troops to make it happen, and some of them may die. Some villagers and citizens are asking for your help, but doing so will cost you resources. Some strangers may want to join your forces, but they either might be weak and cost you more in the long run, or they might be enemy spies or bandits with a hidden agenda and might damage you in return. One evening, soldiers brought before Meave the elf she had saved from a lynching. It seemed he had been the fiend who had poisoned the water barrels from which several soldiers had drunk, then suffered and died. Yes, I did it. And I regret it not one bit, seethed the elf. Nilfgaardian, Temerian, some brute from Lyria, you Dwan are all alike. I detest you. All of you, your filth for what you've wrought with my brethren. I'm proud. I am that even a few of your kind perished at my hand. Hail and Shay. Meave pursed her lips into a thin white line. Raynard knew the expression. It did not bode well. Even if you pray at the chapel to boost the troops' morale, there will be some major characters with different beliefs that will not appreciate it. There are situations that will force you to choose between the two, and whatever you choose, the other one will leave you permanently. However, that is the world of the Witcher, and morally grey is where it fries. Same goes for the story. You're playing as Meave, Queen of Rivia and Lyria. During your rule, the Nilfgaardian Empire threatens with war. But there are also other concerns that will push your authority and rule to the limits. First bandits, now this. Misfortune does indeed come knocking twice. Hmm. In hobnail boots, tramping upon my land. Nilfgaard shall regret this. I swear on all that is sacred and blessed. From the very start, the story is full of meaningful dialogues, hidden threats, conflicts on every corner, dilemmas, treachery and plot twists. He allowed himself this insolence, believing the immunity accorded diplomats would shield him from any form of royal ire. His Excellency speaks true. We Nordlings are barbarians, without exception answered the queen. Though her voice was calm, most of those listening shuddered inside. We neither hold nor honor the standards of the civilized world. Among them, the immunity of envoys. At the... The envoy's escort crumbled beneath the onslaught of Meave's Lyrians, who grabbed the emissary and brought him before their queen. Robes torn and head blooded, he no longer exuded imperial pride. Your Grace, what would you have us do with this pompous ass? It's one of the best written stories in games, period. Easily the strongest aspect of the game. The characters are believable, detailed and intelligent. Monsters less so, but that's by design. The last I believe I know. Well, unless we rush to a rescue, it'll soon be you newer. The variety here is also all over the place. From a wacking gnome inventor and nature-loving sorceress, to a thief bandit with tragic past and some sour, truly green characters scarred by warfare. The witchers are also present but barely and I won't say more to save you from spoilers. 
As her men prepared to march, Neve climbed the manor's tower. The second strongest aspect of the game are the visuals. While it may not be anything technically special, it more than compensates with gorgeous artwork and highly detailed design. It's called old school for a reason. Back then, games didn't rely on technology to make them visually appealing, it was all hand-drawn artwork that made the magic happen. And such is the case in this game. Hi! Look at the palisades. The machines of war, too many to count. I cannot fathom it. Has Nilfgaard sent all its forces into Lyria? No, Your Grace. But a single army. God's protect us. The Queen uttered a juicy curse. Dravagrad stood before them, Nilf guardians all round it. Three, perhaps four battalions of armored infantry. The only bad thing tied to the visuals is that some of the parts are so detailed that they cover certain paths and so some of the areas of the map seem blocked and unreachable. Nothing too serious, but it may leave you missing a few hidden chests on your first playthrough. The animations are also made with these attributes, but in the movie comic book style. And the quality storytelling makes them memorable, despite its technical simplicity. Silence! Let him say his piece. Aside from being a great spin-off game, Fromberker is also a great value pack for the free standalone Gwent as it contains many golden premium versions of legendary cards that you can get by finding them in golden chests scattered across the maps in the game. A contract on a monster. Interesting. Well, well, a worm, just as I said. Now who's addled in the head, eh? In conclusion, Fromebreaker is the perfect choice for the Witcher fans, those who like card games and fantasy or Slavic mythology enthusiasts in general. Look to the high road. The earth furrowed by wheels, hooves. The black lads went at Rosberg with all their strength. An ominous sign. To be clear, it's not a big game, but nor is its price. For around 25 euros or dollars, you get close to 20 hours of excellent story and gameplay experience, plus a value in legendary cards for Gwent. This easily puts to shame every other digital game pack or expansion out there. <laughs> Not to mention Hearthstone. Be bold. Take on challenges, risks even. But before you set out to do anything, Buy yourself some proper insurance. Always darkest for the dawn. Or when the last candle in the mine goes out. Rivia. And here I feared I would see it no more. I believed you would. I believed you could succeed. Be victorious, Your Grace. We've not arrived just yet, Reynard. Look. Black flags still flutter over the cities. We've yet much work before us. More battles to fight. More blood to spill. Thank you for watching. Until next time, keep it up to the core.